So what we're trying to build, uh, at least I call it a dovetail log cabin, um, 12 foot by 12 foot uh, for the main cabin with a front and back porch and loft on the top. Um, the, uh, the dovetail design, um, a lot of people when they think of a cabin, they think of maybe the more traditional um, like semi-circular arches, uh, but this is using a jig to make corners that interlock, um, similar to what I've seen in I've seen it a few places. I've seen it in Eastern Europe. That's where I think I first saw it at a, a museum in the Eastern Czech Republic. Um, but I've also seen it um, in the Southern States too. So I've cut 26 of them now. Um, so this is a log that I'm going to be using for the camp, and this would be like the the dovetail or partial dovetail corner. Um, it's a bit complicated, probably, um, to make. I'm using a jig, but. There's basically just a series of different angles that allow the logs to all interlock and, and hold each other in place. And in theory, you don't even need to screw them or, uh, you know, put any sort of mortise or anything. Um, yeah, so that's a dovetail corner here. And those are all dovetail corners along the end of this log. Okay. So I think for the whole cabin, I'm going to need, well, 32 of these logs with dovetails on both ends. I'm probably going to cut a few more than that just to have some extra in case I need them down the road. Um, and then right now I've got 26 out of the 32 cut. I would say it takes me about 20 minutes per log. Um, with I'm getting a little faster. So we've been using uh, these jigs to make the dovetail corners. Um, and I got the plans for these jigs from a guy uh, named Fred from the States. And he runs a website where you can put in the size of the logs you're using, uh, the gap you want to have between the logs, and the size of your cabin. And he'll give you the the, the plans and then in the supplies it's actually very detailed instructions um, and you can make these jigs. Um, they're not necessarily that easy to make if you're not a seasoned woodworker because there's a few angled cuts you have to make so there's uh, a, a beveled cut here, an angled cut here, you want to be making pretty precise measurements and pretty precise cuts so I get some help from a friend of mine uh, who's a little better at this stuff or a lot better at this stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so this is the finished jig, and the idea with the jig is you, when you have your finished logs, it slides on the end of the log on both ends, and that allows you a guide so that you can cut the dovetail corners uniformly on all your logs. And then a lot of people have asked me how you prevent from cutting the jig itself, because when you're using the jig, you're running a chainsaw along the edge of the jig. And that's just a quick demo, but um, so I, I've made these guides out of uh, plywood and they screw onto the chainsaw bar. I had to drill some holes in the chainsaw bar to put, the, put them on and uh, they prevent you from cutting the jig. This jig's made out of uh, birch plywood. Um, that was just what was advised in the plans. I think birch is probably a pretty rigid, strong hardwood that you can use. So. It's held up so far. You painted it? Yeah, I painted it um, just kind of for protection or to keep it from uh, um, warping. Uh, again, that was what Fred mentioned in the plan, so I just followed his instructions. The logs are supposed to be 10 inches uh, tall by 6 inches wide, and some of them were a bit wider than 6 inches. So in order for them to fit the jig, I had to take a little strip off a few of them. We're going to go through how we uh, put the jigs on the logs okay. and the whole process. So. Uh, the first thing is uh, you measure the thickness or, of the log on one end. So this one's 10 and an eighth. So I make a line at half of that. So what would that be? Four and a sixteenth less than five. Sorry, that would be five less a sixteenth. So I make a line there. And then I go down to the other end. The logs are not perfectly uniform, so I always measure. This one's about 10 and a quarter, so the center of that would be 5 and an eighth. I use inches, I guess, because that's convention, although my mind naturally thinks better in centimeters. Like, I can make half of 104 centimeters a lot easier than I can make half of, you know, I don't know, these fractions. But mm -hmm. also, it's kind of nice to start thinking in fractions. Yeah. Challenge my mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so I make those marks and then I take a chalk line and I put it on one side, 
and I go all the way down to the other side, like that, tighten it up a little bit, and then snap a line a couple times, and then now we have a line that goes down the center of the log. Sometimes when you put the jig on, it uh, rubs off the chalk, so I just put an extra pencil line on the last foot because that becomes important when you're putting the jig on. So I do that on this end. Then I come down here and use my square and make a pencil line there. Now we're going to put the jig on. The jigs have an interior and exterior face. Um, so everything when you're doing this uh, is all, let's say, based on the interior. So this snap line will be the interior of the cabin and the interior face of the jig is what attaches to the snap line. And so what my jigs have is they have a line down the middle with two holes drilled in or windows so you can see through the jig. And what you're doing is you're aligning the jig on the center snap line of the log and then you're looking through these drill windows to make sure that the jig is lined up well on the center line. So that looks pretty good. I like to double check because sometimes what you think is your center line is a, is a like a natural checking in the wood. So I just double check to make sure. Well, sometimes um, when you're looking through your drill window, you'll see a line, a dark line, um, and you th you know it's usually your pencil line. But I also double check um, the measurement because sometimes wood will have a natural oh. checking in it. And I just, one time I put the jig in the wrong place because of that. So, so I double check it. So that's one jig. We'll go on this side. And because I'm making a 12 by 12 cabin, I have to make sure that the distance between the jigs is exactly 144 inches. that up again same as I did on the other side making sure I'm at 144 making sure I'm lined up correctly with my pencil line checking in the drill windows to make sure that's all lined up with the line which is good and then I double check the position here which looks good okay and then I like to measure in both directions just to make sure that my 144 measurement is accurate. Sometimes it's off a little bit, that's actually off a little bit. And so what happens is the final product is the interior dimension ends up being 144 and a half you gain the half inch because the guides on the saw are each a quarter inch. Um, so that's why, although I'm measuring 144, um, the final dimension actually ends up being 144 and a half. Okay. So then you just screw down the jig. Making sure you don't throw it off too much when you do it. Same thing on the other side. Basically, I think the best way to deal with bugs is treat it as a form of meditation. And uh, accept that they're here and they're just doing what they do as bugs, which is, you know, try their best to survive. And I think if you stop fighting them and you stop swatting at them and you just let them bite you, protect your, you know, protect yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't protect yourself, but as long as you're sure there's no diseases in the bugs and you're not having allergic reactions to them, it's not going to really harm you if they bite you now and then. And if you try to kill them all, you'll just drive yourself crazy. But now I'm going to make some cuts.
So this is just an example. This is not the final build or anything, but of how the dovetails fit together. So you can see below here, I've got the lower dovetail and the upper one. Just sit in like that. And uh, the notches are pretty good. It's pretty tight there. And uh, there may or may not be a little bit of shimming and I may screw them, I'm not sure. Um, but that's, uh, that's how it fits together. There's no mortar really needed at the joints, but the final cabin will have a gap between the logs over here. So the next log will sit something like that. So there'll be about a two inch gap. And I'm gonna fill that with, let's say, cement or a mortar or whatever, it's called chinking. And uh, then so you'll see log, chink, log, chink, like that all the way up. So it's looking, looking pretty good. Adjust this end a little.